Greetings, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Tell Your Story Before They Do. Both Harmony and Inspire host these webinars where thought leaders and educators share best practices and tools to support social and emotional learning. These presentations are the opinions and content of our guest speakers and may not necessarily be a direct representation of Harmony or Inspire. Now today, without further ado, I would love to introduce our speaker, Mr. Nate Howard. Nate is a renowned speaker, poet, author, educator, social entrepreneur, and CEO of Movement B. Nate was selected on the inaugural NBC BLK 28 list as one of the top 28 Black leaders in the nation. With the motto of tell your story before they do, Movement B has directly impacted thousands of students across the nation and even the world. Nate's belief is that we should focus our activism on education and empower youth to create change so that the movement is proactive and sustainable. Here at Harmony SEL, we also believe in empowering students to find and use their voices. This is one of the many, many reasons I'm honored to pass the mic to today's speaker, Mr. Nate Howard. The mic is yours, Nate. Thank you, John, for that introduction. I'm excited to speak to you all today. The model of Movement B is tell your story before they do. If you don't remember anything that I told you today, remember that I told you to tell your story before they do. But the question is, who is they? And when does the story end? The life you lead is the legacy you leave. My eulogy was read by a stranger, full of love but with misplaced anger. I never knew I inspired you. Just breathe. Life is too short. Enjoy this moment. They hate me because I'm positive. The negativity multiplies and the result is still positive. Tell your story before they do. Here's to celebrating the accomplishment that they said we wouldn't make it, but they have to keep watching it. I am the greatest and I know that. I am the greatest and I own that. I am the greatest and I have shown that. This is my story. But when does it end? The life you lead is the legacy you leave. My eulogy was read by a stranger, but full of love, but with misplaced anger. I never knew I inspired you. Today, I'm gonna to talk about three objectives. One, how do we gain a deeper understanding of transformative SEL for educators? Two, how can we be introduced to new strategies for ed tech and gamification to engage students at a deeper level? And three, how do we use poetry and narrative therapy to inform our issues of diversity, equity, and inclusion? But first, I wanna give you a background of how Movement B all came into place. Here you see a picture of me on the front page of the LA Times in protest and in front of the University of Southern California. Well, I grew up in San Diego, southeastern San Diego to be exact, the inner city of San Diego, where I was trying to find my identity. So often as a young black male, people try to categorize you or label you as this. And I was trying to fight all the stereotypes that were put on me. So I did exactly that. I did well in school and became a first generation college student at the University of Southern California. But what I realized was though I had academic success, I was trying to find my identity at a university that was predominantly white. A university that was, although had good intentions, was still trying to tell my story of how I would fit in society. So often on campus, I experienced what I came to find out was microaggressions. Well, you're a black student here at USC. Are you on the football team? Did you get a scholarship for basketball? How did you get here? Because obviously I couldn't get there on academic merits alone. In the community of South Los Angeles, walking to campus, police officer would, officers would ask me for my student ID, but not ask my other classmates. Well, why are you asking me for my ID, but not asking them for theirs? Here I was fighting to belong. Please accept me as this young African-American male achieving academic success to please be at your university please accept me as this young black male. The days before my graduation, I was throwing a party, was organized, it was registered, we had security, everything was put together. But something happened that really enlightened my whole experience of what I was fighting. Officers came to shut my party down. 
And this was typical of college parties, but this was different. Instead of just shutting my party down, they told the house across the street, which were friends of mine, mainly white party goers, to stay in the house and be safe while they handled us across the street, students of color, mainly students, black and brown. 79 LAPD officers showed up to my house in riot gear. Yes, I said that right, 79. Now, what was going on in South Los Angeles that you needed 79 officers to shut down a college party? Here I was, handcuffed and arrested in the back of the police car, reminded of who I was, though I thought I was graduating as a first-generation college student, beating the injustice that I thought this college degree would allow me to escape, only to remind me that I would have my BA, but I would still be a target. That's when my poetry allowed me to say, stop the propaganda, there was no message. Only economics dictating politics and artificial progress made positive. This is not your favorite reality show. The revolution will not be televised. I'm not a social construct. I don't believe in this. Hierarchy authority only made me obedient to a structure that never leveled me equal. I'm the rebel without a cause because I never needed a reason to fight for basic human rights. So don't call me this activist. I'm not here for your praise. Or for you to appropriate my words for people with low self-esteem, capitalist pigs. I know the prison industry is your biggest investment. Don't dismiss the fact that there are more Blacks in prison than enslaved in 1850, and that the war on drugs is greater than the war on education will give more sentences than actually teach them, and give hope for great careers as if everyone has an equal opportunity to achieve them. I'm hungry for success, but I live in a food desert. We're Jack in the Box tacos, Big Macs, and Taco Bell nachos cornered by liquor stores, drunk on your lies, starving up on the truth and why I became so inferior to you. Stop the propaganda. There was no message. Only economic dictating politics and artificial progress made positive. This is not your favorite reality show. The revolution will not be televised. Rewind to a time of force as strong as the Haitian Revolution. Rewind to a time when Nat Turner led a slave before 1841. The narrative of Frederick Douglass, the narrative of Sojourner's Truth, and Ralph Ellison's Invisible Man. What's your power? Speak your truth. Show the youth that. 1921, Tulsa, Oklahoma was the epicenter of black business and expansion before the KKK looted and burned every home and business, destroyed and killed every potential of the city, and celebrated the lynching of another brother gone. I called that Dred Scott. Courts ruled we would never be free. Courts overturned affirmative action to obtain a degree. I got my bachelor's, but I've been working for my master's since 1853. I am Maya Angelou's cage bird. I am Tupac Shakur's Concrete Rose. I am the Black Jesus with the Malcolm X soul played by Sidney Porter in a Denzel Road, a granted Oscar for Oscar Grant for all the fathers, gun violence, stole love and revolution. Let the poetry unfold so that the music speaks of a soul unsold. The time is now to stop the propaganda. There was no message. Only economics dictating politics and artificial progress made positive. This is not your favorite reality show. The revolution will not be televised. The revolution will be internalized, and it starts with you. You see, poetry was a way of healing for me. Here as this young Black male and someone trying to tell my story, I realized that I had to be unapologetically me. The only way to shift the narrative is to challenge the status quo by being yourself completely in poetry is the voice of the unacknowledged world. You see, the poet is the least liar. And when I'm sharing my heart and I'm sharing my story, I'm venting, but I'm also advocating. And that's the power of spoken word. As you see in this picture, you see the legendary Ice Cube and his son, who's a good friend of mine, O'Shea Jackson Jr. You see, some people see hip hop and rap as this, this violent message, but really what they were doing in Straight Outta Compton was speaking up for a community and people who were often unheard. And so the power of realizing our story rooted in this idea of how do we take communities who are voiceless and amplify those voices. And you see here in this picture of young black men from my program at CPMA, which is a middle school here in San Diego, the same advocacy was how do we identify these young black men who are getting sent out of, out of class, challenging the school to prison pipeline, not giving them more discipline, but giving them more time to vent of the issues that we're dealing with. You see the young boy here on the left, his father was killed from gang violence. And if we understood his story and the history of how he grew up, we would have more options and giving him an opportunity to share his poetry, to share his rap, his music, instead of sending him to the principal's office 
in a cycle that ends him in juvenile hall or prison. This is what we're doing when we're saying, tell your story before they do, and simply just be giving voice to communities who often don't have a voice. So that was the power of Movement B. In 2013, I decided to come back to my old high school at Helix High and create an after school program. You see, when those 79 LAPD officers showed up to my house in riot gear, I didn't know who my enemy was, who it was that I was fighting, and what was the solution? Now, this was also the time Trayvon Martin, Michael Brown, and we're seeing young Black men in the media literally being killed and realizing that there is no justice. And so I'm fighting, but the emotions of us being so desensitized of Black life had me feeling, well, what is our next step? And again, I came back to poetry. You see, some people see poetry as a way of connecting to Shakespeare or connecting to the literary devices of a metaphor or how to write uh, a certain poetic stanzas. What I'm advocating in our work with Movement B is that poetry is a way of social emotional learning. And that if we challenge our schools to be more authentic by sharing their heart through poetry, we can raise student achievement. We can inspire self-confidence, support shared storytelling, provide a consistent environment for student expression, and more than anything, destroy the negative stereotypes and limiting beliefs that has affected so many of our communities. So you see here in this picture, this was our holiday party in 2013. We started with our program, Room 80 at Helix High, with five students who were interested in poetry and spoken word. That grew to 10 students, to 20, to 30 to 40 students voluntarily coming after school. And as you see in this picture, we created a family, a home away from home. I mean, so many students go to school to escape their home environment, looking for mentors, looking for people to support them in their school day. That's what Movement B became. Bigger than just writing a poem, we became a place to just be. So fast forward 2013 to now, we have created an online platform to connect all of these stories for our new digital environment. After the program at Helix High, we started doing workshops across San Diego. Workshops at the Monarch School, which is a school for students impacted by homelessness. We hosted the Foster Care Education Summit. We are now in all the juvenile halls in San Diego. And I realized there was an intersection, the intersection of youth impacted by homelessness, youth who have unstable environments, youth who come from certain backgrounds, because there's no full support on their emotional well-being, there is no motivation sometimes to academically achieve if they don't have a safe space to express what is really going on in their life. So often we work with students to say 2x plus 6 equals 12. And may they know the answer, they're not motivated to even share because they're wondering what they're going to eat tonight, wondering if they have a stable home trying to understand the issues of their family, the dynamics of divorce, and the things that are going on on a daily basis, the atrocities that these students are dealing with. And moreover, what I'm challenging us to realize was this was going on pre-pandemic. And because of what has happened in this last year, we should be more intentional about what our students are going through. That is the power of transformative social-emotional learning. You see, Movement B is challenging our schools and our communities to realize that students have anxiety, social media, these unstable environments where they are finding their story in all the wrong places. And they're looking to be validated through the likes, validated through culture, popular culture that is showing them things that may not be influential to their best well being. And so, if we have that understanding, transformative social emotional learning is asking our schools and communities to understand a specific population of students. And that specific population of students typically deals with cultural backgrounds or based off the communities that they grew up in. Where social emotional learning may look at all students across the board, transformative SEL is saying, how do we look at specific populations? 
Maybe that students of color, maybe that students who come from certain social economic backgrounds, whatever that may be. And how do we challenge our schools to make sure that these students feel like they belong, that their culture is fully represented, that they can fully just be themselves by not having to change your identity to fit the culture of the school, but that the school begins to shift their identity to be more inclusive of all students. That is what our platform is about. So our goal is to connect students, educators, and professional counselors, and specifically professional counselors who support students in their emotional well-being. Now, most of our schools have counselors, and these counselors are focused on academic success. And that's great. But the goal is, do we have social workers, therapists, other counselors who deal with students who may have just lost a grandparent during the pandemic? Other students who have who have lost, you know, their sense of being through through due to racial issues. Whatever it may be, social emotional learning on the transformative space is saying let's be more intentional of our students who come from certain backgrounds and how do we support them. And so this movement B platform is going to give an emotional report card pre and post these activities to show the progress of our students. This gives you a slide of the background of how Movement B started in our online platform. And so as I mentioned, we started this program at Helix High School. 30 to 40 students were coming voluntarily after school. In 2016, I decided to do a GoFundMe. And the goal was to raise $10,000 in 10 days. Luckily, we raised it in 15 days. And this was the beginning of the Movement B app. Knowing that students are connected in the digital age and would have to be prepared to share their story online, this app was created to, to challenge Instagram, to challenge Twitter, to challenge all of these other social media platforms where students weren't being their most authentic self. So often, myself included, I'm trying to find the right filter or to try to find the right thing to post to please my audience, to be validated, to be accepted by the status quo, the culture that I'm trying to be a part of. But in this sense, we're just asking students to just be. Grass doesn't try to grow. It grows. Birds don't try to fly. They fly. As you can see in these activities, these are the social emotional learning character development activities that typically aren't happening in school. When your teacher is explaining science or the next literary device in English, could we talk about stress and how students are dealing with stress in their life and at home? Again, we talk about this idea of work and what it means to work for students. There's so many different activities that this Movement B platform has supported students on to engage them so that they can better engage in the classroom. And that has been the goal of Movement B. You see, what I'm challenging us to begin to realize is that so many of our young people have so many things that they wanna express, but the way our classrooms are set up typically leave them silenced. And Movement B is giving agency to students, giving them power to realize that they matter so that our classrooms become more of an exchange, an exchange of understanding what other people are going through so that in this community, we can all begin to shift the narrative and all be engaged in what we're learning. And based off that, our learning experience becomes something that we can apply to our own life. Aaron said, I was so close to giving up today. That expressed in a classroom creates a community of understanding where we all can share in the learning experience from each other while a teacher is facilitating the curriculum. You see, that is the power of poetry and how we can now move that. Now that we have an understanding of poetry and how poetry is connected to transformative social emotional learning, I want us to now understand how transformative social emotional learning and poetry is now connected to gamification. We are living in the digital age. We realize even in this last year that we can do education online. And for certain students, more direct self-directed learning or giving them other opportunities outside the classroom gives them better opportunities to engage in their learning. 
so often as I'm talking to teachers and other educators and we talk about engagement, I always ask, do, do young people have an issue engaging in their video game all night? Do they have an issue engaging in the things that they find fun and interactive and connected to who they are? And so part of what we're doing now in Movement B is how do we take this poetry storytelling experience and create games around it? And based off that gamification, students get connected on leaderboards to compete with other students. They earn coins when they share their poems and stories that can then be turned into the store for other incentives. That is what we are excited to share next. You can see here our avatar experience. Now, many of us have created avatars. And part of that is being able to recreate our identity. And when I'm talking about tell your story before they do, and I'm questioning who is they, I am challenging us to realize the you versus you battle. Somebody may be trying to tell your story, maybe looking to make you feel less than or to destroy your character. But in this idea of creating an avatar, how do you begin to reshape your identity? And part of that experience is giving students this, this, this power to say, you get to decide who you want to be. And that's a fun experience here. The more coins you get by the more stories that you tell, the more you can add to your avatar. And that experience will be updated as we continue. Here is our poems board. Our poems board is where students will be posting all of their poems. In this poems board, students will have access to all of their poetry, but also have access to the poems that other students write. But if students don't wanna share their poem, that is okay as well. Certain poems are just for you. The reason why we created this platform is I had a student who wrote a poem and I noticed it was pretty suicidal. And I realized that she was looking to find a platform to share what she was going through. But when we look at our schools, there may be 2,500 students on a school campus and there may be one or two professional counselors, if that. You may have a school psychologist who already works with students who have an IEP, and you may have other counselors, as I mentioned before, who may be focused on academic success. Maybe a school has a uh, school social worker. But typically, when students are going through emotional hardships, those individuals don't actually come in until something breaks. Why do we have to wait till something breaks to focus on the emotional well-being of our students. We should be intentional in making sure that we have the support staff or the platforms to support students on an everyday basis for the atrocities that they are dealing with in their life. And we should look at our poems of our school as being a summary of the stories that our students are advocating and wanting to share. This is the importance of being able to shift the narrative of the school not by the administration or the educators telling what the students should be, but the students actually giving voice to how they feel on campus and shifting the narrative based off their poems. Often imagine a school has a school yearbook with pictures and school clubs, but imagine a school poetry book where you have the poems of all the students on a school campus so that you can reflect of the well-being and the thoughts and desires and feelings of all students on a school campus. Here's the leaderboard I mentioned. When we talk about education, so many students are disengaged by the facilitation of the education. We have to be honest. Some classrooms aren't fit to engage students. They may be boring, they may be dull, they may, may be out of touch. And to understand how to affect the students who we really want to succeed, let's meet them where they are at. You know, part of the work that we do in facilitation with poetry and spoken word is that it's entertaining. As a facilitator, I'm engaging you in spoken word and sharing that experience. Now to take that to another level, especially if we're using technology, how do we include gamification? where students are playing games, but learning at the same time. Giving them the opportunity to engage so much in the game that they don't even realize how much they're learning because they're just trying to get the high score. 
wanting to be competitive with their classmates, realizing they can get coins to get prizes. This is the power of students not competing to see who has the highest GPA, but moreover, competing to see who can be most open and sharing their story to have the highest score. We see a different result in the power of the students we want to affect. As you can see here, this is a simple screen of showing once you get coins, how you can then turn those coins in to get glasses for your avatar and other incentives that we will add here for the engagement of our students. This shows our social emotional competencies and how the platform will work. Based off Castle and the competencies they share, responsible decision-making, social awareness, relationship skills, self-management, self-awareness, this is based off my book, Tell Your Story Before They Do. Chapter one, who am I? This talks about students going through the book, reading the book, answering questions, and then being able to experience that by answering questions that connect to the social emotional learning competencies. Students will choose words through word games and the words that they choose in the words games, they can then use in their poems. In order to get to the next level, they have to unlock each chapter. But before they get to the next chapter, they also have to answer a survey that asks them about their well being. Now, that survey will give them results on the front end, but then it will give results to the admin educators on the back end so that they can see the well being of students. That's what we can see here. This is what we will call the Movement B chart. This Movement B chart gives a graph of the well-being of students over time as they go through the reading of Tell Your Story before they do. In the first evaluation, you can see how it breaks down in all of the social-emotional competencies and what that looks like over time. On a scale from one to five, five being the highest and that our students are doing well, one being the lowest, if we can look at our students who are scoring a two or below, we can identify those students who need more support. Now imagine this scale from a student who enters high school as a ninth grader to a high school student graduating. What we will realize for that professional counselor, for that admin, that maybe in ninth grade, John was dealing with a loss in the family. And based off that emotional report card, instead of giving him discipline because he acted out in class, we realized that he needed therapy or some more emotional support instead of forcing him to pass a test that he doesn't understand why it applies to him at this moment. This is again, what we're advocating in creating reports that are more than just a GPA, that are more than just an academic success uh, of measuring success for our students. Very excited about this work and believe this can really look at the social emotional report of a whole school and compare that to other schools to show the diversity and inclusion as well of how certain students are affected on campus. This is now what I am very excited to share is our Movement B Center. This Movement B Center is something that we just launched recently. And the Movement B Center is a challenge of how we create community spaces outside the traditional schools. Typically, youth centers have always been a YMCA or a boys and girls club. And often students age out some of those programs or may not fit in those dynamics. We launched this Movement B Center June of this year to create a safe space for students to just be. We recently launched our summer camp, which is called Hip Hop and Pizza. And in Hip Hop and Pizza, it's simply that. It's a vibe of hip hop culture, poetry, and spoken word expression with food and community to engage students in the writing process for them to just be. The power of this is saying the four walls of a traditional classroom often leave students feeling like they don't own anything in this space. And so the Movement B Center is challenging students to realize this is your home. Metaphorically and literally, how do you write on the walls? As you can see, students and young people painting the building, which they will paint outside and inside to make it theirs, giving them, again, agency and power. The power in understanding that is once we give students voice, they feel motivated to achieve. 
When we throw information at students that it's redundant, that they have to remember for tests, they already know the disconnect of why this may even be important for this success. So the Movement B Center is a model here in San Diego that we may hope to scale across the nation to create these safe community centers for students to just be. And overall, the goal is, how do we create safe spaces, both physical, in person, and online for all of our students to succeed? Here's just a quick image of our summer camp here. As you can see, uh, students are playing a game of Uno. Um, and we also have our ping pong table, and you can also see the writing exercises. You can see students drawing. We also have our VR experience. But again, the experience of education is how do we gamify or create entertainment value for our students? We know that when students are having fun and are engaged in the experience, they are there to learn and uh, they have a better understanding of learning through that experience. This is our student workbook that is tied to the book, Tell Your Story Before They Do. And as a social emotional learning workbook, it's just a notebook of blank pages. Again, there is no curriculum in the sense that we're forcing students to learn things in a certain way, but more it's just a framework for them to have a blank canvas to discover their story and who they want to be. And when does the story end? And the life you lead is the legacy you leave. My eulogy was read by a stranger, a full of love, but with misplaced anger. I never knew I inspired you. Just breathe. A life is too short. Enjoy this moment. They hate me because I'm positive. The negativity multiplies and the result is still positive. And tell your story before they do. Here's to celebrating the accomplishment that they said we wouldn't make it, but they have to keep watching it. I am the greatest and I know that. I am the greatest and I own that. I'm the greatest and I have shown it. This is my story, but when does it end? The life you lead is the legacy you leave. My eulogy was read by a stranger, full of love but with misplaced anger. I never knew I inspired you. Now that poem is called the Nate Howard intro, which is on the album by Ty Dolla Sign, uh, who is an American R&B artist and hip hop. Uh, hip hop artists. The power of what that poem is sharing is that my eulogy was read by a stranger. So often we don't tell people we appreciate them until they are gone. And how do we create spaces where we show vulnerability and love to all students and to all people while they are here alive showing that support? My whole message for today is that you understand the power of your story. And as educators in our classrooms, that we give students the courage to be the best versions of themselves. Oh, that's that old fluff, oh, inspiration, do whatever you want. That is okay. A motivation is daily. And it's a reminder to give the power to be the greatest person you can be. As I end here, I wanna share one last poem. In this poem, as you see this student performing, I hope that you encourage your students, your family, people in your community to share a poem and that you share a poem as well. Again, the poet is the least liar and poetry is a voice of the unacknowledged world. Will I ever be enough? Now, don't get me wrong, I love my skin, love my melanin and this dark brown Afro, but I wonder, will I be enough? I went through school trying to fit in, or so they think, because really I was trying to stand out, debunk the stereotype and live my best life. I tried listening to all the right teachers and following all the right paths. I ran track at a white high school, so I felt the need to prove myself. Made team captain and immediately had to make myself seem small and say please with everything. They called me the Hulk because I asserted myself. But why is my strong personality so intimidating? Why is my position not enough for you to listen? I made it through high school with a 4.0 GPA, got into my dream school, and I soon had to face the world. 
I walked into college wondering, was I enough? Am I capable of doing the work that used to not seem so hard? Am I enough for those that I need to build connections with? I graduate with a bachelor's in management, but did I mention that I was a black woman? Because society taught me that I had to work twice as hard to be half as good. Even though black women make up the highest percent of college graduates and have a lifetime of experience, but we won't talk about that. I watched my mom try to climb the ladder to success. And I listened to my daddy call me his little Oprah. But I wondered, was I enough? Am I enough for the black man who sees me and doesn't speak? Or for the coworker who doesn't know what to say when my hairstyle changes? Is my dark skin too much for you? Is my power so strong you can't handle it? Or is my confidence starting to pour out so much that I'll flatline before you can stitch it? I stopped wondering if I was enough because I know I am. I started to believe in me and everything I knew I could be. I grew into the woman that can play spades with you and run an organization too. So will I ever be enough? Let me put on my crown and see because being a queen is enough for me. Wow, now that was a powerful video, powerful inspirational video, as was the first video, as was everything that you shared with us today, Nate. I, I don't wanna speak for anyone else, but I imagine that the audience and everyone that views this video will be just as inspired by you. I do wanna ask one other question though, as we think about questions from the audience, one that I would like to ask is, how do we create those culturally relevant curriculum of SEL that you mentioned? How can we move in that direction? No, thank you, John. Great question. You know, as I shared today in the presentation, I think it's okay to not know. And, and part of that is really creating safe spaces to just be open and vulnerable. As we create culturally you know, relevant curriculum for SEL, really engage students in the process. Really the challenge is creating an exchange. So often as educators, we are trying to create curriculum for students thinking that this is what they need. And if we just involve students in the process, have an open dialogue of what's going on, we can co-create with our students. And because they feel like they have created the curriculum as well, they will be more inspired to do the work. I think that's the power of co-creating with your students for this culturally create, uh, <laughs> and relevant curriculum. Thank you for that question, John. Thank you, Nate. Very powerful, as I said earlier. Also wanna point out, um, we're really excited that we're going to be giving away 250 of Nate's books, Tell Your Story Before We Do, a Guide to Winning the Battle of You Versus You, quite the interesting title. I'm going to go through the emails. I'm going to reach out to everyone to confirm your mailing address, all of our winners. I should do that in the next couple of days. Also, look forward to joining for you joining us for our August webinar, August 26th at 10 a.m. Pacific Time and 1 p.m. Eastern Time, where we're going to host our next monthly webinar, which is entitled Stronger Together, Reconnecting with and Affirming Our Students, Families, and Communities. We've invited an expert panel, and I don't use the word expert lightly. The panel includes Dr. Susan M. Green from New York City Department of Education, Ms. Jesse Cuddy and Ms. Jacqueline Stedman, both from Communities and Schools, and they're going to share how they're supporting communities to get ready for the new school year. Our own Harmony SEL director, Lauren Pusen, will host and she will kind of spark the conversation between these two. We look forward to you being there, hearing this expert panel, and you can register on our website today. We also invite you to follow our stories on our social media channels and share your thoughts about today's webinar. Before we close, we have a brief clip that we would like to share with you so you can see where you can sign up for free trainings to learn more about bringing Harmony and SEL practices to your communities. Want to supercharge your Harmony SEL implementation? Explore everyday practices, lessons, and activities. 
or the latest Harmony resources with a live presenter. Register for virtual training sessions now in the Harmony Online Learning Portal. Visit online.harmonyscl.org for more information. Thank you everyone for joining us today. I'm sure you were inspired as I was by Nate and by the videos that he shared and the great information that he shared. And in closing, in his powerful words, I ask that you enjoy the rest of the day and just be. Thank you.